It's time for our tech segment, and joining us now is our technology reporter, Paul Ndiho. Hello, Paul. Uh, hello, Esther. Thank you. Uh, Bitgreen, a company building blockchains, epicenter for sustainability and impact investing, is partnering with green infrastructure developer Cell and an international climate action platform to build Bitmai, hydroelectric facility in Sierra Leone. The coalition of stakeholders hopes to raise $10 million for the facility. The 27 megawatt Pampana River hydro powered project will ease the region's energy uh, poverty, beginning bringing affordable renewable energy to 500,000 homes in Sierra Leone. For more insight, I'm joined by Adam Kava, CEO and founder of Bitgreen, based in New York City. Welcome to Africa 54. It's terrific to be here. Thank you for having me. Let's so start by you telling me uh, what you've been up to. You are a man on the verge of perhaps one of the most important uh, uh, power plants uh, in uh, uh, in West Africa. Tell me what is it that uh, you've done at, at, to this point? We partnered with an organization named the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet. That's a group that's led by the Rockefeller Foundation, IKEA Foundation, and Bezos Earth Fund. And my company is named Big Green. We're a blockchain project that's committed to forwarding sustainable initiatives throughout the world, particularly in the global south, related to providing financing for middle class lending and financial inclusion, as well as financing for renewable energy projects and other infrastructure projects that can enable those countries and those communities to leapfrog into um, kind of a new infrastructure and industrial complex. I'm particularly interested in knowing why you chose, of all places, you chose a Sierra Leone uh, to be like the base. Because I love the music. <laughs> what happened was that uh, the Global Energy Alliance had been working in Sierra Leone for many years. And they had deep relationships with the government as well as a very prominent uh, energy developer named Searl, S-E-R-L. And so we were introduced to Searl via the Global Energy Alliance. And one of the primary reasons why Sierra Leone was attractive is because uh, the country has kind of has suffered under a energy poverty regime for many, many decades. Uh, about 75% of the population lives without regular access to electricity, as well as 95% of the rural population. And so number one, there's a demand for electricity. Number two, there's a viable access point for clean hydroelectric electricity along that Pampana River around an area known as the Betmai Falls. When you talk about uh, energy crisis, uh, Sierra Leone is not just alone. Uh, when you go across the entire continent, it's, uh, it's, they have a power crisis issue. Uh, do you, uh, in the future, in near future, uh, plan maybe to expand this project to other countries that uh, could benefit uh, from what you're trying to do? Energy poverty and energy challenges are not um, uh, only endemic to Sierra Leone, they exist throughout the African continent and elsewhere. Sierra Leone is just our first project on the continent, and there are a pipeline of other initiatives that we're going to pursue after we're able, after we're able to complete this one project. When you talk about a blockchain, a lot of people don't understand this new term or this new technology. Uh, maybe, uh, if you don't mind, would you mind explaining what you're trying to do in those terms? In the most simplistic term, it's similar to a computer program or a computer operating <coughs> system. So many people may have a cell phone, right? And perhaps they have a phone that runs on an operating system known as Android. For example, Android's an operating system. And then on top of your phone, you have many different apps. Well, a blockchain in many ways is very similar to the basic program that your phone runs on that it then enables other applications or apps to be deployed and executed. The chain of those blocks is known as a blockchain, and it is a chronological and extraordinarily transparent form of operating a, a computer system. A lot of people are opposed to new technology. And uh, in your particular case, uh, you bring in something that even out here uh, in the West, uh, it's not a popular thing. How are people receiving it, uh, let's say, in, in Africa, in Sierra Leone? What's your experience like uh, trying to convince people uh, to jump on board with this uh, kind of initiative that you have for them? It's our responsibility as ambassadors of the blockchain technology uh, sector 
that we are able to explain ourselves to people in a manner that meets them where they are, whether, whether they have never heard of our technology or whether they are familiar with it and maybe they've already participated. What is most important here and is the true equalizer is what the technology can do. It doesn't really matter the story that we weave or the amount of capital that's flown in, that has arrived and been invested or the capital that's sitting on the sideline waiting to be deployed. The only thing that really matters is can the technology, once deployed, do a superior job. Green's purpose here is actually to harness this blockchain technology in its many different evolving strengths to work toward the betterment for all people, and especially in markets that have been highly ignored and neglected by other more traditional technologies. Thank you so much, Adam. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. I really came here with gratitude and I, and I enjoyed our conversation. And thanks, Paul, and good night, viewers. Thank you.